What's Up's Corner, and today we're going to give you something really simple and easy. This is all about stem mastering. So you have a track, and it's some elements of the song or the instrumental, maybe a little too loud and too hot a little bit. So you really want to just make your vocals match with the audio of the track that you're rapping to, singing to, or whatever the case it is that you're doing. So the best way to master that is not to necessarily master the somewhat seemingly mastered track to your vocals. You want to actually, instead of taking your vocals and doing it all on one take, you're going to actually separate the takes and you will see what you will do with the master or the instrumental and what you could do with the vocals. And there are many different ways of doing stem mastering, but this is for the simple bedroom producer, rapper, singer, whatever have you. And there's ways to actually master a track without having to master something that was kind of already done. So take a look and see what I have in store for you guys. <laughs> okay, so what I have here is a song getting ready to get mastered. And the issue is I have a very strong mastered looking song, the instrument right here, this one in the blue. And usually when a song is already mastered musically, that is, or has a lot of dynamics, let me rephrase that to a degree, then you can't master a master because you'll be putting more dynamics on top of a song that has dynamics. So if you look at this very closely, you could clearly see it's squared off. It's squared, very squared at the top. So that means there's not much room for me to do any more. So there is a little bit of headroom between here and the ceiling. That's because I went and I took this down a little bit. So when I put that at default, that zero right there, now, there's a little bit less, but still headroom at the end of the day. Well, what we want is a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is go back to where I had it. So what you could do is you could send out your track instrumental out individually from your vocals. And this one in the green is the vocals that went to this track recording so your stem mastering to a degree now let me also say as a disclaimer i am no master engineer what i'm trying to do is advise engineers or people who are doing stuff at home who wish to at least give their song a competing chance against their uh their peers other songs that are out there into the market this is a way to actually get some oomph into your track without having to, to master it twice, per se. Because once you see this kind of going on in your session, there's lots of stuff going on there. There's really no need to master because the track, especially if it's a two track, then it's assume that either it is mastered or assume that there's lots of dynamics not necessarily mastered in the track. Once you know it's loud enough, then what's next is you, the recording, to match the volume of the instrumental. So this is what we're doing here. This is just a basic setup of a master stem or stem mastering concept for songs that you have done. So since this is a two track, this gets its own channel. And these are the vocals all bust out or exported out or printed out into a waveform. And this is what they look like. And then a master fader. And then the print here, which is in blue. All right, the print right there. And then a submix right there. Actually, that's not, yeah, that's the submix. And then this one here, which I completely forgot to name. This is a Mondo boom. And that is going to act as my stereo 
thing that I wanted to do. I had other choices, but I kind of like what that was doing. So, boom, that Mondo is not a rule as to how. It's just a creative decision. Um, but this is the setup. Instrumental, vocals, master, print, and sub to all them together. And if you would like to know a little bit more about my sub mixing connection thingy, by all means, hit the link at the description and you'll be able to see how that all gets set up. But this is the basis. Instrumental, vocals, a print of them both. And this is what it looks like at the end of the day, right? None of that flat stuff going across and some peaks and those peaks are more than likely what the vocals are doing in comparison or in conjunction with the instrumental. So the whole thing is not flat out looking. We got some things moving up and down. That is what dynamics are for folks. It's to give some movement in the track, a movement of deep parts and dips and things like that. Those move, so shall the representation of that be seen in your wave at the end of the day, a wav or however you wanna call it. Um, this is what it should look like, dips and valleys and things like that, because that's natural movement of sound, not flat piercing your ear type stuff. I get into a process of what I did to actually do that, to get to this point later on, and these are my plugins of choice for the vocals, and a limiter to not let the master clip which I didn't want it to do, which it was doing, and it was mainly doing it because the instrumental was extremely loud. I think we beat the loudness war. I would like to believe we did. And um, that's it. So if you like what I have to give you here today on Zeb's Corner, and of course there's going to be more of these for the month of April and beyond, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these audio tips now that I have the means and ways of showing you what I could do or what could be done in the door of choice, which is not the one that everybody and their mama uses, but it's a preferred one that I use. Uh, and it's a preferred one of showing examples of things that I think that I can't show within reason or any other. I do use Studio One every now and again, um, but not too much. And, uh, but there'll be more of these to come in the future. And of course, uh, until I see you in the next one, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the little belly thing to let you guys know I'm coming with stuff when I'm coming with stuff, and I will see you later. Mm.